Who would be number one on the New England Patriots list? Hmm. Oh, certainly. I mean, the great Patriots of years past, beginning in the 1770s. Company! To the forward! The Revere's. The British are coming! The British are coming! Prime and load! The Washingtons. My first wish is to see this plague of mankind, war, banished from the earth. Brewer Patriots Sam Adams. They were playmakers. This is as good a list as you're going to get. What? Number nine. How is that possibly right? Give me eight in the box. That has to be better than seven. This is great. Wrong. Five yards, we win the game. He's got the best number for rings. Is it number two? Has to be the number one. Laughable. There is no question. Number one. Best ever. Many Patriots teams during the franchise's first three decades didn't have a lot of get up and go. A remarkable play! It seemed like their entire existence, everything that could go wrong, did. And only nitwits like me were sitting there with my little freckled face and my stupid scarf and my ridiculous snorkel wondering when Jim Plunkett was going to throw a touchdown pass or whether or not Harold Jackson was indeed 71 years old. You had a Patriot snorkel. I didn't have a Patriot snorkel. I had a green snorkel with the orange optic interior and a Patriot's pom-pom hat. I covered the game when Irving Fry got in a car accident at halftime. At halftime. <laughs> you know, who gets in a car accident at halftime? <laughs> it was crazy. Despite the madness, some all-time great Patriots did emerge. We are the Patriots! Hey, and we're here! Fast forward to the 2000s, and winning Super Bowls became the standard. We are all Patriots! But if you expect to see a certain coach wearing a particular garment on our list, you'll be disappointed. That's a player's game. I'd do it's anything for you, coach. Game. So what kinds of players should make the cut? Eddie Dan, touchdown, Corey Dillon. You'd have to have success for a lengthy period of time, and you have to do something special. Intercepted. The Patriots are going to be Super Bowl champions again. Obviously, you can have great players on not-so-great teams. Quarterback Steve Grogan leads one of the most diversified attacks in the league. So what's more important, all pros or Pro Bowls or leading teams to championships? The problem is you've got so many that are very fresh in people's minds because of the run that Bill Belichick and Tom Brady have had. Great job. What a win. Great job. It took every second. When you look at a list of top 10 Patriots, it's tough, physical, smart football player, disciplined, and does his job. Look, fellas, it's just about doing our job. This is a tough list to crack. The number 10 New England Patriot of all time, Adam Vinatieri. The Patriots are not the dynasty they are today without Adam Vinatieri. It, it's simple as that. Adam Vinatieri arrived in New England in 1996, but his rookie year began in disastrous fashion. The kick is no good. Whoa. He had some big misses early in the year in Buffalo. And it is no good. And then almost was cut three or four weeks into the season until... Vinatieri had that game against the Jaguars. He had five field goals and just carried them to a win in overtime. The kickoff all the way and... Clutch, 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 clutch. There's no question we have to call him the most clutch kicker of all time. The dynasty in New England was built on that right foot. That snowy day against the Raiders. Adam Vinatieri will attempt a 45-yard field goal to try to tie it. A 45-yard line drive, a dot through the uprights. That's the greatest kick Vinatieri ever made. Kick on the way, and it's a it goal! I remember Steve Sable telling me that that was the greatest kick in NFL history. When you watch, you still can't believe it made it through the uprights. It just drifted and drifted and drifted. You could barely see it through that cinematic snow. That kick launched the Patriots dynasty. Super Bowl 36, still the only Super Bowl ever decided on the last play of the game. Set to go, snap ball down, kick up. Kick is on the way, and it is good! Two years later, Beats the Panthers on a last-second field goal in the Super Bowl. Ball down. Kick up. Kick is on the way. Kick is good! One, two, three. I don't know if any other kicker has one such memorable kick. He has three of them. 
the kicker who ran down Herschel Walker from behind. It's a remarkable feat, but for a kicker to do it, it's something special. It is a foot race, but a carry diving to hold him down. That's when Adam Vinatieri went from a kicker to a football player. And maybe why he earns a spot on the list. Closing speed. I've never used the term closing yes. speed with a kicker. You know, he is involved in these great plays, but he was also involved in some of these weird plays. The extra point attempt is coming. And now they're going to run for two. Adam Vinatieri. When you have the ability to give it to your kicker in an untimed down with no defense on the field, I mean, that's, that's a weapon. And then he had a touchdown pass. 22-yard field goal attempt for Adam Vinatieri. It's a fake. Pass to the left. Touchdown, Patriots! That sort of just adds to the Vinatieri legend, I think. But Adam Vinatieri is, after all, a place kicker. And he'll retire having played more years as a Colt than a Patriot. So does he really belong on this list? I'm okay with him being number 10. I wouldn't say it's a slam dunk. There's no way you can argue against Vinatieri being on this list. No way. Campaign for you for the Hall of Fame. I appreciate that. I think there's an argument to be made that Vinatieri could be higher. Who is more responsible other than Tom Brady for those first three rings for the Patriots? Coming up, which Patriots receiver caught enough bombs to explode onto our list? These guys caught everything in sight for the Patriots, but still failed to snag a spot on our list. Between 1960 and 1969, as a combo receiver and kicker, Gino Capaletti scored 1,100 points, a league scoring record that will never be broken. That's the American Football League. I think Gino Capaletti deserved a spot in the Pro Football Hall of Fame because of what he did in the AFL. When there's any space and you can go up and get it, right? I think you should go up and get it. Randy Moss caught 50 touchdowns with the Patriots, including an NFL record 23 in 2007. Touchdown, Randy Moss! A one-handed stab! And Wes Welker left New England as the team's all-time leader in receptions. He caught over 100 more passes than the next guy on our list, but for almost 3,000 fewer yards. The number nine New England Patriot of all time, Stanley Morgan. I can promise you as a kid growing up in Boston, if I was playing touch football and I was lined up at wide receiver, I was Stanley Morgan. The Patriots found their 1977 first round draft pick at the University of Tennessee. At Tennessee, they sing the praises of Stanley Morgan. But while he caught passes in college on occasion, he was a running back by trade. No one first took him, said, what are you gonna do with this guy? And uh, they knew what they were gonna do, which was throw him the ball. What you saw right away was uh, a difference in speed. Stanley Morgan scored his first touchdown as the Patriots rolled past the Jets 24 to 13. Even the guys that were as fast as him didn't look as fast, didn't look as smooth, didn't look as athletic. He's got Morgan with 35 to 40. Now on 30 to 25 to 20. Touchdown, New England! Teams were backing up when he came out of the huddle. They were petrified of Stanley Morgan. Back then, you go deep, and I'm going to hit you and, and see what happens. And he was just so explosive, so great at getting downfield. Probably the most exciting single offensive threat the Patriots have ever had. A big play receiver now might average, what, 13, 14, 15 yards a catch. Stanley Morgan routinely averaged better than 20 yards a catch. Morgan takes it. 19.2 yards per catch over 13 seasons. That's more than Randy Moss. Just look down one side and find 81. I'm going deep. Terrell Owens. It's going to be hard for you to overthrow him. Lynn Swan. Lynn Swan beat his fans on the ball. It's one of the top 10 of all time. He was catching the ball 20 yards downfield. He wasn't catching it eight and then taking it. So air traveled was probably more significant than any player in NFL history. You can look at Stanley, and, and some people would say, well, he's a one-trick pony. He's got Morgan on the fly. He grabbed it at the 20. That was 10 Touchdown! He was a home run hitter, and that's how they played. They played the vertical game in those days. He wasn't just a great downfield receiver. He was also pretty good with yards after catch. A lot of people would say, well, you don't see him catching in traffic. It's because he ran past all the traffic. The traffic was 
Tampa Sand. Hey, slow down, will you? Down the 30, the 25, the 20. Touchdown, New England. Back to the throw, and he sends it deep down the middle. He's got a receiver. Stanley Morgan, touchdown. Stanley Morgan, to me, is the most underrated Patriot in the history of the team and maybe one of the most underrated players in the history of football. And it is touchdown, Stanley Morgan. Stanley Morgan is better than many of the wide receivers in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Stanley Morgan, touchdown. Number nine is a good spot for Stanley Morgan. I probably would push him higher just because I think that he's the great unrecognized player. Right side. Put him on these championship teams, all of a sudden that's a different ranking. Fires deep, touchdown! Patriots score! Stanley Morgan holds it in! Stanley Morgan is the best wide receiver in Patriots history. The number eight New England Patriot of all time, Steve Nelson. Number eight. That's probably about right. Can I come up with 10 Patriots that are better than him? I don't know why he's on this list. I mean, Steve Nelson? Are you serious, Steve Nelson? Steve Nelson made the stop for New England. If you took him to 11, I'd be stomping my feet and say, what are you thinking about? Oh, I can see Ron Borges arguing for him, and I can certainly see players arguing for him. Absolutely one of the great all-time Patriots. <laughs> Nelly was a guy that just wanted to uh, play football. When Nelly hit the stage, no, not that Nelly. This one. When Nelly hit the stage, he made a big impression. I actually was a ball boy for the Patriots as a kid, and I can just remember certain guys you respect. I referred to him as Mr. Nelson. Great beard. Four daughters. Four daughters. You really wouldn't want to get on Nelson's bad side. Our number eight Patriot racked up more than 100 tackles in nine different seasons. He's the leading tackler. For the Patriot defense. A very Patriots esque 1,776 tackles in his career as a Patriot. He went to a couple Pro Bowls during a time when the Patriots didn't have a lot of success. He's one of those definition guys. Steve Nelson, number 57, was the glue that held this youthful defensive platoon together. He's one of those sort of team icons that every team has. Oh God, I love you! If you're going to mention the top 10 Patriots, Nelly better be in there someplace. Nelly, being one of the great Patriots, comes from him being smarter than everybody around him. Nelson's the brains of this defense. 17 interceptions for inside linebacker is absurd. Nowadays, most inside linebackers aren't on the field on third down. And back then, they threw the ball less than they throw now. Intercepted! And, and in a Steve Nelson had the presence of mind after calling to be able to flip the ball to his teammate for the touchdown. He was diagnosing things like coaches do in meetings, but he was doing it on the fly. I remember watching him and marveling at how he never seemed to be out of position. It was always where he was supposed to be. Steve Nelson, the inside linebacker, does for this defense what Singletary does for the Chicago defense. Because he didn't play on a lot of great teams, he might be underrated in the course of NFL history, but on the Patriots, he's certainly a top 10 player, no doubt. I'm shocked that I'm saying this, but I feel like you knocked this one out of the park. Feels just right. Up next. Let's go, let's go, TB. Not that TB yet. TB, suit up! Which other TB gets his initials inscribed on the list? That way, TB! Come on, fellas, just do your job! In the Bill Belichick era, his mantra of do your job has really meant do any and all jobs necessary to win. How about Nate Solder having a nose for the goal line? By way, Nate, you big ogre. Julian Edelman's forte is catching passes, but the former college quarterback can also sling it. Hamandola wide open. Touchdown, Patriots! Patriots fans were more used to seeing Richard Seymour stopping the run, but sometimes he helped out New England's ground game. Seymour, the fullback, Antoine Schmidt to the right. He is in. Mike Vrabel was also a Patriots defensive stalwart who moonlighted on offense. He has 10 receptions in his career as a Patriot, 10 touchdowns. Vrabel's scoring prowess was legendary in New England, but he came up just short of our list goal line. 
He lost out to another player who was likely the most versatile Patriot ever. The number seven New England Patriot of all time, Troy Brown. If someone wanted to be a professional football player and they came to you and said, who should I model my game after? The first player I would tell them would be Troy Brown. Need a good wide receiver on the outside? Troy Brown's got you. Fires end zone, touchdown, Troy Brown. Need a great guy in the slot who can make a clutch catch? There's Troy Brown. Boy, oh boy, is he something. Want your punt return? TroyBrown.com. Troy Brown at the 45. He heads left to the 50. Straight up the middle of the 45. To the 40. To the 35. To the 30. 25. 15. 10. Touchdown. Troy Brown. Fancy running by Troy Brown for a go-ahead touchdown. In addition to receiving and returning punts, our number seven Patriots spent time at defensive back in 2004 because of injuries to the secondary. I got Troy Brown out there, man. Come on. How many guys in their 30s are even capable of playing both ways and picking off three balls for you? It's an Picked off by Troy Brown. Maybe 70, 80 years ago, guys did that more often, but in the modern NFL, to do what Troy Brown did is pretty damn impressive. When they asked me to do that, it was like, well, coach, I do my best with a smile on my face. And that's the way I go to work every day. Good job by Troy Brown on the pass interception. Do whatever you can to help your football team win. Troy Brown, to me, is the consummate patriot. Before Tom Brady was TB up in New England, Troy Brown was the original TB. Way to work it, Troy! I think you could take Troy Brown off the list and put Teddy Bruschi on the list. I think you could take Teddy Bruschi off the list and put Mike Vrabel on the list. You could take Mike Vrabel off the list, put Richard Seymour on the list. Any one of those guys fits that mold. I wouldn't do anything this team asked me to do. This what you do. I think do you are do. the embodiment of what this team represents. Troy Brown's a good pick to stand out amongst the, the Vrabels, the Brewskis, because there's so many moments for him. So many big plays that Troy Brown was involved in. Troy Brown was Mr. Patriot. With just 31 touchdowns over 15 years, why would we put Troy Brown on this list at number seven? Well, the numbers don't tell the whole story. The Patriots win it over time! Bill Belichick says stats, they're for losers. Guys put up bigger numbers in shorter spans, but they didn't have as big an impact on the organization as Troy Brown did. The snap the ball down, the kick is blocked! The kick was blocked! He's the one who scoops it up, starts running with it. It's going to be picked up by Troy Brown! Laterals it to Antoine Harris. Heading down the left sideline, and he goes all the way for a touchdown! Without that play, there is no Super Bowl 36 and maybe no dynasty. He just always made those clutch plays when you needed them. Perhaps none bigger than that strip of Mullen McCree. Intercepted at the 30-yard line and taken fumble. down and a fumble on the interception. The Patriots recover. They win the game. Troy Brown is really one of the players that Patriots fans associate with winning. I think seven is a pretty good spot for one of the all-time Patriots. Troy Brown gets a rousing hand from the folks in Foxborough. He's not a Pro Football Hall of Famer, but he's certainly one of the greatest Patriots ever. The number six New England Patriot of all time, Ty Law. We played the Patriots one time, and there was this play we were going to call on third down, and I really didn't like it. And I even mentioned to the coaching staff, Ty Law's going to sit on it. It's not going to work. And they were like, just trust us. So we run it. Pass it back on the rollout, and the pass is picked off. Ty Law with another one. Exactly like my worst fear. But it wasn't just like some random interception. They, like, stopped the game. Interception by Ty Law ties in with Raymond Claiborne in the Patriots record book for the most career interceptions at 36. It was this awful nightmare, like those commercials you see of someone at the grocery store going through and they're, they're buying something embarrassing, and then all of a sudden, Bruh, you're our one millionth customer. And it was just like, oh, my gosh. Ty Law is probably the best cover corner I've ever played with and seen. Long and deep and intercepted by Ty Law. Ty Law had his coming out party in Dallas in 1996 when they put him on Michael Irvin. Fires to the near side and it is picked off. Ty Law. And that's what Ty Law always wanted. Every single week, he wanted to line up face to face with the best guy on the other team. How you doing, baby? baby. Yeah, you about, baby. He was one of those guys who you could stick out on the opposing number one, and you knew he was going to take care of that side of the field. Firing long and deep, and intercepted by Ty Law! Spectacular! 
High Law always seemed to recognize the moment. Nobody could ever forget the, you know, the greatest moment of his career, picking off Kurt Warner and scoring a touchdown in Super Bowl 36. Picked up by Ty Law. His hand high over his head, you know, running down the field. Touchdown, Ty Law. Any great player, you have to say this about them, what they do when the brightest lights are on, when the stage was biggest. Ty Law made plays. <laughs> Ty Law intercepted nine Peyton Manning passes in his career. Manning shoots it long and intercepted. When Ty Law was in a contract squabble with the Patriots, he said, don't you understand how good I am? Like, you know, Ty, I think you're being a little unreasonable. He goes, you know how many times I picked off Peyton Manning? You know what? Peyton Manning's going to put me in the hall. No other player had more than six. Manning floats it to the right, could be picked off of it. Ty Law endeared himself to Patriots fans forever when he picked off Mighty Peyton Manning three times from the 2003 AFC title game. Dumps it off to the right and it's picked off. Standing in there, fires to the right, intercepted Ty Law. Peyton Manning made what's now known throughout New England as the Peyton Manning face. I would say that he belongs in the list just for that game alone. Law bounced around with three other teams for the final five seasons of his career. So did he land in the correct spot on our list? He belongs in the list, even if he was a gun for hire in, in later years. Yeah, I love him at number six. I think he's another guy like Stanley Morgan. That's a candidate for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Picked off by Ty Law at the 20, at the 15, still on his feet at the 10, heading to the right, and he is going to go in the touchdown. I think you can move Ty up a lot higher than six. Certainly, he and Mike Haynes are the two greatest corners to ever play in New England. Coming up, which player who left the Patriots still found his way onto the list? You're trying to have it both ways over there at the NFL Network. If he had his entire career in New England, he would have gone down as being one of the all-time greats in this organization. March. Before we continue to march through the top 10 Patriots of all time, let's take a look at our list so far. Number 10, Clutch is his middle name. Let's go! We have to call him the most clutch kicker of all time. Number nine, bombs away, Stanley. Probably the most exciting offensive threat the Patriots have ever had. Number eight, Nelly, the tackling machine. He's one of those sort of team icons that every team has. Number seven, Mr. Do Everything. Troy Brown is really one of the players that Patriots fans associate with winning. Number six, Ty Law, Manning Tormentor. He goes, you know how many times I picked up Peyton Manning? And now, the number five New England Patriot of all time, Mike Haynes. From 1970 to 1975, the Patriots weren't so great at defense, compiling a 26 and 58 record. That all changed in 1976 when they drafted the eventual defensive rookie of the year. New England selects Mike Haynes, defensive back, Arizona State. The weakness was the defense, and they made some changes in the defense, brought some guys in, and I was lucky enough to be one of those guys. Haynes blitzed into the NFL with salvos of publicity, which hyped him into instant superstardom. Mike Haynes, as a rookie, eight interceptions. And Haynes came up with an interception. He made an immediate impact while he was wearing that Pat Patriot you love on his helmet. Mike Haynes was the measuring card for cornerback play in New England. The big, smooth corner who could do it all. He's tackled by Mike Haynes. What it means to have a shutdown corner in New England started with Mike Haynes. Before there was Neon Dion, before Revis Island, heck, even before Daryl Green, if you needed somebody to lock down your best receiver, it was on the New England Patriots. It was Mike Haynes. You kind of remember Mike Haynes changing the way you looked at the Patriots because he was such an explosive player, both on defense and in the kicking game. Haynes is probably one of the best athletes on the football field. From 1960 through 1975, no punt returns for a touchdown in team history. Big play for New England. Mike Haynes comes in, too, in his first year. Any style you wanted to play, any era you wanted to play in, Mike Haynes could succeed. Uh, here comes Haynes. Oh my God, he was just so dynamic. An incredible athlete. Did so many different things effortlessly. He runs it in for a touchdown. Hayes is playing deep, and there it is. 
Some found it a stretch to include Mike Haynes because this show is the top 10 Patriots of all time, not the top 10 cornerbacks. His appearance on this list caused some controversy because of one aspect of his career. Do you hold against him the fact that he only played half his career in New England? They let him go in a salary dispute and uh, traded him for a bunch of draft picks. One of the biggest mistakes I've seen a team make in history. Picked off by Haynes. Seven years here, seven years there. Won a Super Bowl there, six Pro Bowls here. Mike Haynes, he has a place on the list. You're trying to have it both ways over there at the NFL Network. I appreciate that. But it's like putting Babe Ruth in the Red Sox Hall of Fame. The Patriots don't have a ton of Pro Football Hall of Famers. And if you played half your career in New England as a Pro Football Hall of Famer, you should be on the list. Yeah, we've been talking about all evening. Number 40 is Mike Haynes. If he had his entire career in New England, he would have gone down as being one of the all-time greats in this organization. Maybe second to you-know-who on the list. The number four New England Patriot of all time, Andre Tippett. He was a force. Go watch the highlights. Andre Tippett blasts through the blockers. Andre Tippett has been all over. He was sacking the quarterback, and, and he was making plays that they had never seen around here. 1984, team record, 18 and a half sacks, franchise record holder with 100 career sacks. You see some of the plays he made just shedding blockers and standing up a guy and throwing him to the turf. He just brought a unique violence to the game. Can't block Tippett. He was among the most dominant defensive players in football in the middle of the 1980s, and no one can deny that. When you watch Andre Tippett play football week in, week out, he was as good as any player ever at that position. I put Andre Tippett up there against Lawrence Taylor any day of the week. Here comes Lawrence Taylor. In trouble. Tippett got him. It was hard to differentiate LT from Andre Tippett. He was putting up Lawrence Taylor numbers, playing without all the talent around him that Lawrence Taylor had. Oh, what a big hit by Andre Tippett. Lawrence Taylor was the best uh, outside linebacker ever to play the game. Tippett was that just barely next level of guys down. To say you're one slight notch below the greatest player ever to play the position, that's still pretty damn good. One of the things he got the most publicity for was he was the you know, seventh degree black belt in some form of karate. Football is a fight in a lot of ways. It's hand-to-hand -hand combat. And being able to utilize martial arts into the football process was really easy for me. Andre Tippett did a little karate stuff right there. He all played with only two Pro Bowl players on defense his entire career. Two different guys who went once each. He was one of the few players that offensive coordinators had to game plan for. Andre Tippett was a dominant player, uh, even though he wasn't playing on dominant teams. Nationally, people don't recognize what a talent he was because those teams weren't on TV. People did not see him play football. Andre Tippett is one of only two players to make the Pro Football Hall of Fame after playing his entire career with the Patriots. So have we done him justice by putting him at number four? No. Mm -mm. Maybe three? Possibly two? We got a guy who was probably one of the five, seven best players in the league for a period of time in Vince Wilfork. Oh! Intercepted! Vincent Wilfork! He's not on your list. Somebody thought that was a great idea. And here you have Andre Tippett at number four. Home by January every year. He's top three. No question about that. He's another one of those guys, if you could slide his career back five years or so, it would have been really interesting to see what they could have done with a guy like Andre Tippett. And a great play by Andre Tippett. Who, who, who's ahead of him on this list? Who indeed? Want a hint? Who was the tight end? Which hard-to-cover tight end planted himself on the list? He's a beast. Get your fall football fix at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. See the newly acclaimed Game for Life experience with holograms of Joe Namath, Vince Lombardi, and George Hallis. The exclusive Hunt Casterline Pro Football Hall of Fame card collection. The highest quality of cards ever displayed. The spectacular film Road to the Super Bowl. And a photo opportunity with the Vince Lombardi Trophy. Go to ProFootballHOF.com for more information. Visit the Hall of Fame today. The most inspiring place on earth. 
When you list the top 10 Patriots, you can't exclude a dominant tight end wearing number 87, can you? Well, Ben Coates was the team's other number 87. In nine seasons for the Patriots, Coates caught 490 passes for almost 5,500 yards and 50 touchdowns. Nobody's going to catch him. Touchdown, Ben Coates. Between 1994 and 95, he made 180 catches for over 2,000 yards. When you look at what he did for a three, four-year period, it's one of the best in the game. His spike wasn't half bad either, but Coates' work fell a bit short of the standards set by the next guy on our list. The number three New England Patriot of all time, Rob Gronkowski. There's like the Patriot way of doing things, and he is so far outside of that. Ah, 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 hit him, all, hit him all. <laughs> You're gonna behave like that? You better be a baller on the field, but he's a baller on the field. Our number three Patriot has been getting it done since he arrived in New England. In 2010, he set the team's rookie touchdown record with 10, and he's continued to be a problem for opposing defenses ever since. He throws to Gronkowski. He has a touchdown. Gronk's a beast. <laughs> he's a beast. He's such an incredible athlete, but yet he's always out in left field. Yeah. I would never think that... Bill Belichick and Rob Gronkowski would be able to be in the same room together, but somehow they get along. It's so weird that it works so well. Never seen Bill Belichick laughing, joking with the player. Yeah, I think he likes number 87. I love this person because he is, feels prehistoric. Me Gronk, me want ball. Don't do algebra around Gronk, I've learned. He could eat the man who knows algebra. 2x equals 5? No. 2x equals you have been eaten by Gronk. Gronk needs protein. <laughs> you can't have enough, man. I don't normally like having these young players on an all-time list, but Gronk is different. My God! What a catch! He's an impossible matchup. And he poses with kittens. It's totally normal. I don't think I've ever seen a name or a nickname fit a player more in the history of the NFL than Gronk. He's beyond even a celebrity now. Hawk, touchdown, Rob Gronkowski. What's greater than the Gronk spike? He spikes it with a mighty spike. The guy has actually made the jump from not just being like a great football player, he's a verb. Whoa, Gronk, watermelons. Whoa, Gronk, a pinata mustache. Oh, candy. <laughs> this cult of personality crap that goes on now is foolish. Let's stick to the football. Tom Brady has found Rob Gronkowski for a New England touchdown. They have surpassed the connection of Drew Bledsoe to Ben Coates as the most productive quarterback to tight end combination for scores in New England history. Every time he makes a play, you giggle like a little schoolgirl. Tom backs up, throws for Gronkowski, makes the grab at the 20, spins away from the defender, stiff arms another. Every time he catches it and starts running. Touchdown, Patriots! I am sitting there like... <laughs> Look at that run by Gronk. Damn, I gotta stop. I'm being a groupie. People will say you're rushing it, but no, he belongs in it. This, this is a generational player. Give me 21 Gronks and a quarterback, and I'll take my chances. No one has done what Rob Gronkowski does at tight end. I don't even know how I did that. I'd say he could be bumped up even higher. He's distinguished himself as one of the best at his position over an extended period of time. That's why you're the best, though. That's why you're the best. I think Gronk is a good number three. Depending on how things shake out, you might put him in the conversation as the top two, but I think when you have those two guys ahead of him, it's awful hard to break into that category. Coming up. Don't be good. Let's be great today. Dominate the line of scrimmage. You win games, and you just might find a spot near the top of our list. Willie McGinnis knifed across the line of scrimmage. From 1987 to 2000, no player represented the best of the New England Patriots like Bruce Armstrong. Bruce Armstrong was six and a half feet tall, 295 pounds of large-handed Sunday dependability. A six-time Pro Bowler, Armstrong played in 212 games for New England and retired as the franchise leader in that category. If Bruce Armstrong was sitting there, he'd say, you put a kicker on the list? And I'm not on that list? 
He might come after you for that one. As exceptional a Patriot as Armstrong was, he wasn't the greatest offensive lineman in New England's history. That trophy belongs to... The number two New England Patriot of all time, John Hanna. In a league of very big, scary men, John Hanna was a man amongst men. In number 73, John Hanna. The Patriots have one of the finest young guards in the game. He was as good at his position as anyone has ever been. The thing I always was impressed by him was a guy that big who was that nimble-footed. It was amazing to watch him move, pull out and move, come off the ball and move, drop back into pass coverage and be able to stay balanced. It was really like a ballerina, which sounds absurd when you look at the size of the man. Whether run blocking or pass blocking, watching Hannah is like watching an animated textbook on how to play the guard position. He was an athlete at a position that wasn't known for athletes then or now. That guy would bury you and be happy doing it. The Patriots of the 1970s ran, ran, and then when you thought they were done, they might just run again. Brogan, trying to run it, trying to carry it down and in! The 1978 Patriots ran for 3,165 yards, the most in NFL history. That record will never be broken. Who do you think they're running behind? They're running behind their guard. They didn't have, you know, these individual great running backs that were putting up 17, 18, and 100 yards. It didn't matter who you gave the ball to. You give the ball to me, and I'd gain something. Everybody knew they were running the ball, and you couldn't stop it. And John Hanna was the reason why you couldn't stop it. I enjoyed the attack side of football. I didn't like to be a guy sat back on his heels. Defensive backs used to say that he sounded like a freight train when he was pulling. Get out of the way, because if he's coming at you, you're on your back. Andy Johnson roaring in, following the block of big number 73, John Hattie, one of the best guards in the business. When he was pulling around the end, I felt sorry for some of the people whose assignment was to take that on. I just pitied him poor linebackers because he used to just bury him. If you stood in front of him, he was going to put you on the ground. My goal was very simple. I wanted to be the best offensive guard that ever played the football. And this fellow that you see on the cover of a recent issue of Sports Illustrated, Paul, you proclaimed him the greatest offensive lineman in the history of the game. There he earned that title, and uh, he earned a lot of yards for the guys running behind him. I would say John Hanna is the best guard ever. He may be the best offensive guard in NFL history, but is he the second best player in Patriots history? That's pretty high. The Patriots have a lot of great players. I mean, John Hanna's a great player, but two? You have a guy who's their first Hall of Famer. Certainly, John Hanna at number two on this list makes all the sense in the world. No, John Hanna is not number two. Rob Gronkowski is. Gronk will get his turn. I think he will eventually pass John Hanna on this list. But right now, Hanna at number, he's a clear number two. Yeah, I think there's one other person who deserves a spot at this list. Coming up, are you ready for it? We're waiting a long time for this one. Number one on the list of Patriots. I wonder who that is. Who does fantasy? Who does fantasy? I do. You got any of our guys? Hey, New England fans, you may have to wait on your quarterback, but you can shake out the rest of your Patriots fantasy roster with the players we've seen so far. Number 10. Adam Vinatieri kickstarts a dynasty. I remember Steve Sable telling me that that was the greatest kick in NFL history. Number nine, forget Morgan Stanley. The Patriots invested deep with Stanley Morgan. Stanley Morgan, touchdown! Number eight, don't mess with Nelly. Steve Nelson made the stop for New England. Number seven, what could Brown do for the Patriots? Pretty much everything. To do what Troy Brown did is pretty damn impressive. Number six. It was law and order in New England. Ty Law endeared himself to Patriots fans when he picked off Peyton Manning. Number five, Mike Haynes, the Patriots OG shut down corner. Mike Haynes was the measuring card for cornerback play in New England. Number four, the Giants had LT, the Pats had AT. Can't block tippets. Number three, Gronk, just Gronk. Every time he makes a play, I am sitting there like... <laughs> Number two, Hannah's the man. John Hanna, the great old pro guard of the Patriots. If he's coming at you, you're on your back. And now, the number one New England Patriot of all time. Finally, Tom Brady. 
Tom Brady. There really is no other choice. Super Tom. There's no debate to really be had. Tom, 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 Tom. Best ever. Ever. I don't know about you know that. that. Ever. I love you, but I love that. Dad, ever. To be number one on a list like this, you have to be wicked good. Tom Brady owns nearly every team passing record from touchdowns in a game. Six touchdown passes for Brady. To touchdowns in a season. Brady fires it down the right sideline and caught for Tom Brady. Touchdown pass number 50. To touchdowns in a career. He's the franchise. It's another day at the office. He's the greatest quarterback ever to live on this earth. He's won four Super Bowls in the modern day era with the salary cap. Tommy's number one. He has won all of the bowls. He has so many rings. He has so many rings. You know, he's like a Vegas performer. The top 100 players list every year. He's top five, despite the fact that he's 38 years old. Our top Patriot of all time got his start in 2001 when New England's then franchise quarterback, Wally Pip, I, I mean, Drew Bledsoe, took a fateful run. Mo Lewis with a tough hit on Bledsoe. Tom Brady owes Mo Lewis. I owe Mo Lewis. There's Mother's Day and then there's Mo Lewis Day. Make sure you send your flowers. Even though Drew Bledsoe was a $100 million quarterback, Tom Brady changed what it means to be a franchise quarterback in New England and, and to be a New England Patriot. Rise up! Hey, take it to another level! Rise. His ability to get everyone to buy in as a leader, to be able to get an extraordinary level of performance, those are the things that make him the perfect Patriot. Let's go, fellas! Time to roll! In training camp, I was never more motivated to snap the ball well so much in my life. He would look at me and say, all right, Ross, me and you, great snap first, let's do it. All right, Tom, I will. Give me my best snap ever, Tom, let's do it! He's the Bay Area boy and has a glamour to his lifestyle, and yet the blue-collar, hardcore New England fan has embraced him as one of their own. Tom Brady, overrated. I love the Tom Brady haters. Yeah, I, got, I guess I'll bring up Deflategate. Now you're going to bring up this crap and you're going to try to discredit Aro Tommy. That's not going to happen. His legacy is still secure. The people who love him love him even more now. The people who didn't like him are just going to double down on that dislike. He's so, he's perfect. He's like this perfect specimen. Unicorns, show ponies, where's the beef? Just leave that photo of Brady up forever. It would be fine by me. Love it. Love it. Can you make it look like we're kissing each other? Hell yeah, man. Guys, this is so creepy. What? Hmm? Hmm? Oh, now you're kissing his cheek. That's nice. <laughs> Tom Brady will forever be part of Boston's fabric. Tom Brady or Boston baked beans and Boston cream pie. Tom Brady is at the top of the mountain. Tom Brady so dominates this list, we have to find other ways to, to compare him uh, in the annals of New England war. Clem Chowder has to be ahead of Tom Brady, right? That sucks. The fourth Super Bowl put him ahead of Fenway Park. So you go Boston Claim Chatter, Tom Brady, Fenway Park, and then you go from there. He's Tom Brady, he's the best, and he's number one. Yes! Yes! The guy's incredible. Patriots, done. Stop. Mic drop. Tom Brady. Boom.